Sometimes it's useful to have magnetic tools and sometimes it's really not useful at all. Now in a previous video I showed how a screwdriver, which was magnetic, could be demagnetized by, or, or magnetized or demagnetized by swiping along the edge of a magnet. But for larger tools like this you can't really do that, it's not as convenient. And that's where a degausser comes in handy. Um, so in the case of this LED, LEDs tend to have a steel core to their leads. So they are, tend to be magnetic, and if you're cutting the leads on, say, a circuit board, you find that the, um, the wires tend to stick to the snips, and if you're cutting a lot of leads in the circuit board, you end up with your snips just covered in bits of wire, and it starts getting in between the blades, and it can be quite annoying. So that's where a degausser comes in handy for removing that magnetic charge. So I'm just going to stick this LED away, because I won't be needing it right now. Now, the principle of degaussing is very simple. If you apply a tool to an AC electromagnet, um, just really, if you can imagine just a, an AC supply, and then coil wound round a core, and you apply the tool to it, it will alternatively polarise it as the, the current alternates with a north and south magnetic pole. But if you then pull that away, if you reduce, steadily reduce the magnetic field, you get an effect like this. If this is a sort of base line, and this is the north magnetic field, and this is the south magnetic field, you, as, the, as you pull the uh, tool away, it's got a really high initial um, field that it's putting in your tool. But as you pull it away, it gets lower and lower and lower and lower until it gently just wavers away to absolutely nothing and leaves no net magnetic field on your tool. And this can be done in two ways. <laughs> the simplest way is with the magnet shown, but you can have an automated system, and this used to be used on cathode ray tubes, where you'd have the cathode ray tube and there'd be a coil wound round it, round the outside of it. And cathode ray tubes, the cathode ray tube displays used to be very prone to taking magnetic fields because they used um, basically a magnetic field to steer the electron beam. If there was a, anything happened, like you touched a magnet to the screen, it would effectively put a magnetic field on that area of the screen, then you'd get all sorts of colour distortions. So to degauss them, to remove the magnetic field from the screens, they did this. They had live, and then they had a PTC thermistor, PTC, then the coil, and then neutral. And what happens, a PTC thermistor is a positive temperature coefficient thermistor. It starts off with a low resistance, but as it heats up, its resistance increases. So when you power this up, off, in, in the case of monitors that, or TVs that just had it automatically happen, um, when you powered the monitor up, Initially, because this was cold, a lot of current would flow through that coil and it would subject the screen to an alternating north and south magnetic field, a really powerful one. But as this heated up, its resistance would progressively increase, meaning that the amount of current flowing through the coil would reduce and that magnetic field would, as shown in the previous picture, it would just taper away to zero. And then once it reached a sort of equilibrium point, that there was, it was able to maintain the temperature, but uh, the current through it was just barely enough to do that, that would be it in a sort of standby mode. So um, I've got a degausser now. I bought one on eBay from China, and it looks like this, and it's a manual degausser. It's got the button. So I'm just going to plug this in now. And nothing terribly exciting when you press the button. It's a moment traction button. The red LED glows. But if I... Um, pick up some uh, leads with this screwdriver and then put them down again. And then I hold it onto this. If I just hold it on it and press the button, it's going to make a lot of noise. And if, if I just let go of the button, uh, there's no saying what's sort of magnetic state. It's still magnetic because although it was alternating north and south, it didn't taper away. But however, if I then do it, if I hold the button in and I lift it away slowly and pull it away from it, then theoretically it's not going to have much, uh, there's a little bit of residual field, but not much compared to what it was before. And if I did that in a more controlled manner, and it's quite difficult when it's actually... I don't know how far the magnetic field extends in front of this, I don't know how far you have to pull it away. Let's try that. 
Oh, there's a very slight uh, residual field. I think I, I think the screwdrivers I might just stick to the to the magnet. But uh, let's try it with the snips because that I've got it really for the more complex shapes. It may be because it's be because it's not affecting the whole shaft at once, but in this case it should. Oh God, it's quite powerful. So if I pull the snips away from that slowly. That's it, they, they don't have the magnetic field anymore. Slight trace magnetic field, but nothing really major. So, um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. Now, these things are not rated for continuous operation. I'm guessing that in this, actually, you know what, I'm going to open it up because, of that. well, that's inevitable, isn't it? Um, I'm going to unplug it first, which would be a really good idea. I'm guessing it's just going to be a circular coil, but I'm not really sure. doesn't just pour out when I take this cover off. Looks like a transformer. It's a bit of a transformer. It's an E-core. Is that glued in or is it? I think it is stuck in. Oh no, it's not. It was glued in. It's an E-core. Just without the, the final bar put across, it's just half a transformer. Now this thing said it was suitable for 110 or 240 volt operation, so I'm guessing that they're just basically made it with one coil inductance and that's it. The, and they're just relying on the fact that, you know, don't keep the button pressed for too long. Hmm. Smells mothballish for some reason. Uh, there's an LED with a resistor in series with it. It's very short duty and this very cheap and tacky button that I wouldn't really rate for mains voltage, but they're using it for mains voltage and switching it on the neutral, which is interesting. So really not much to it. Um, fundamentally, just an electromagnet, you push the button to energise it and then pull the things away from it and uh, it uh, leaves very low residual magnetic field on them. I think I'll play about with this because I did notice there was just a trace, but having said that, it's not really anything really major now. It's not picking the leads up anymore. So that's uh, that's pretty good. That's really kind of what I wanted. Okay, I've just been doing a little bit more experimentation with this, and it turns out the best way to demagnetise the large objects is to cover all the metal, and uh, to do that, you just press the button down and move it backwards and forwards through a magnetic field. And I can still feel the magnetic field vibrating the screwdriver at this height, but you then just keep moving it backwards and forwards and moving it further away, and it should leave it with no net magnetic field at all. And that's worked. Likewise, the same thing removed the magnetic field completely from these. So what about big objects like, like wire cutters like these? So, um... See if I can completely demagnetize these. Yeah, it's not bad actually, it's pretty good. It's removed the magnetic field. That's good. So yeah, it's quite a handy little device. It wasn't expensive mainly because there's really not much in it. But um yeah, that's that's a handy wee device indeed.